Hey everybody, today we are looking at chapter 5, section 4, which is the triangle mid-segment theorem. The first thing we need to know is what the mid-segment of a triangle is. So a mid-segment is what it sounds like. It is a segment that connects midpoints. So if we look here, x is a midpoint, y is a midpoint. So the segment xy is a mid-segment. Same thing here and here and here and here. The three mid-segments form a mid-segment triangle. Okay, so now there's a couple of things that we know when we have mid-segments. First off, a mid-segment is going to be parallel to the side that it doesn't touch. Okay, so segment DE here touches this side, it touches this side. So DE is going to be parallel to AC. It is also going to be half the length. So let's make up a number. If DE is 10, then AC is 20. Okay, so they will be parallel and it will be half the length. If you have any questions about that, go ahead and write it down now. So let's take a look. Okay, we want to find each measure. If I want to find UW, UW is this segment right here. Okay, so if I look at this segment, I want to know which segment is it going to be parallel to. So I look at the side of the triangle that it doesn't touch, which is this segment over here. So these two are parallel, and UW will be half the length. So UW is going to be half the length of ST. So ST is 7.4, so UW is going to be half of 7.4 which is going to give us that UW is 3.7. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the measure of angle SVU. So SVU is this angle right here. Okay, it is formed by the mid-segment and the segment of the triangle that is already highlighted and this transversal. Okay. So, if I want SVU, I want to look and see, okay, it's formed by this side. Well, I have another angle up here. And what do I know about these two lines? I know that not only is this half of this one, but they are parallel. So that my purple angles, because this is up in this one, it's kind of hard to tell. But my purple angles here are alternate interior angles. So the measure of angle SVU is 41 degrees because it is alternate interior angles with WUV. All right, so what I want you to do right now is to go ahead and try these next three on your own. Um, so go ahead and pause the video, give them a shot, and then come back and we'll see how you're doing. Okay, so let's take a look here um, at your answers. So give them a check. Uh, one thing we didn't really talk about is with A here, I'm looking for JL, which is the long side. Okay, I'm given the shorter one. So I know that PN is half of JL, but remember that means that JL is also two times PN. So you can work it either way, whichever one ends up being easier for you. So since I have PN, I'm just going to double PN. All right, here I have P, I'm looking for PM, but I'm given LK, so I know L, it's half of LK because that's the side it's parallel to. And then for the measure of angle MLK, that's this angle right here. I know that my green segments here are parallel, so if I look at this pink one as a transversal, these two blue angles are corresponding angles, so they're going to be congruent. So all of that gets to come back, those corresponding, those alternate interiors, um, maybe see same side interiors. Okay, those are going to come back this chapter again. So please keep that in mind. If you have any questions on any of those, either the example one or the on your owns, go ahead and write them down. Okay, so with example two, we are looking at trying to find the values of X and Y. I know that OM on and mn are all mid segments because i can tell that n is a midpoint because these are congruent 
O is a midpoint because these are congruent and M is a midpoint because these are congruent. So what I'm going to look at is see, okay, I know that Y, which is going to be this side right here, okay, is going to be parallel to this side here. Okay. Um, because that's the side that it doesn't touch. And I know that X is going to be parallel to this side right here. And I know that um, right here, this 5X plus 3 is going to be parallel to here. So I've got my colors all matching for the sides that are going to be parallel. Now, Notice that this piece here, this DF, doesn't have anything with ON. So I really can't do anything with those. So let's take a look at what I do know. I know that this pink line here for X is going to be half of this one, which is DE. So I know that X is half of 4X minus 10. Okay? Then if I look at y, I know that y is half of 2x plus 12. All right, so when I look at these, I want to see which one is going to help me. Again, if I look at this 5x plus 3, there's nothing over here. So this is what we call extraneous information. It's not anything that we actually need. Okay, notice that our first equation here has all x's in it. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this one half. I'm going to get x is equal to 2x minus 5. All right, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. I'm going to get negative x equals negative 5. So that means that x is 5. Now, over here, I can plug that x in. So I have y is going to be equal to half of 2 times 5 plus 12. All right, so that means that y is going to be half of 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 12 is 22. So y is going to be 11. All right, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down. And let's take a look at example 3. So what we're doing with example 3 is we are actually proving the mid-segment theorem. Okay, so we're going to use a coordinate proof to show that a mid-segment is parallel to its opposite side, or the side it doesn't touch, as well as half the length. So we're going to start by plotting this in a coordinate plane with variables as um, its coordinates. All right, then we're going to start by finding the coordinates of those midpoints, because we need to know kind of where we stand with all of that. So if I'm going to find the coordinates of D, remember your midpoint formula is adding your X's, so I'm going to add 2Q plus 0, and then I'm going to add my Y, so 2R plus 0. Okay, so this is 2Q over 2, which is just Q, and this is going to be 2R over 2, which is just R. So the coordinates of D are, oop, I can't write a Q, R, Q, R. All right, then I'm going to find the coordinates of E. So again, I'm going to add my X's. So I'm going to do 2Q plus 2P and then 2R plus 0. All right, I can factor a 2 out of this to be 2 times Q plus P. And then I can divide both of these by 2. So I'm left here with Q plus P. And then, again, I have the same 2R plus 0, so it's 2R over 2, which is just R. All right, so the coordinates for E are Q plus P comma R. Again, I know it can be a little wonky when all you're dealing with is letters, but we just need to persevere through it and don't let that mess you up, okay? So, again, we're just putting this in the coordinate plane with variables and then finding those midpoint values. So now what we can do is we can show that those are parallel and that it's half the length by using slope and by using distance. So all we're going to do here is we're going to find the slope of DE. 
So remember when I'm finding slope, I'm subtracting y's in the numerator. So my y's are r and r. Okay, my x's are q and q plus p. All right, so r minus r is zero. Q minus Q plus P is going to be a negative P because remember we need to distribute this negative. But this is just zero. Okay, so the slope of DE has a slope of zero. So then we're going to look for BC. I'm going to do um, zero minus 2P. Oops, 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 oops. Y is on top, zero minus zero, and then 2P minus zero. Okay, so this is going to give me 0 over 2p, which again is just 0. So these two segments have a slope of 0. So what does that mean? Okay, they have the same slope. So that means that DE is parallel to BC. All right, then we want to use distance formula to show that their lengths are half. So I'm going to start by finding the length of DE. So I'm going to subtract my X's. So I'm going to start and do E minus D. So I'm going to do Q plus P minus Q quantity squared. So X2 minus X1 quantity squared plus Y2, which is R, minus y1, which is also our quantity squared. Okay, q plus p minus p is just p. So this is going to give me the square root of p squared plus 0, which is the square root of p squared, which is just p. Okay, so de has a length of p. Then we're going to look at bc. Okay, so same thing, the square root, and I'm going to subtract my x's, so 2p minus 0, quantity squared, plus 0 minus 0, quantity squared. This is going to give me the square root of 2p squared plus 0 squared. We can leave the squared there. Either way, it doesn't matter. Okay. So 2p squared, I have to square both of these. So this is going to be the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, and then p squared, which is p. When I square root that, that's just 2p. Oop, 2p squared over here. So when I square root both of those, it's 2p. So notice that as a result of this, that de is half of bc. All right, so again, all we're doing is just proving using variables that the mid-segment theorem actually works, okay? You're not going to have to prove that again on your own. You're just going to have to work with it, all right? So again, if you have any questions, go ahead and write them down, and then you can ask me in class, and I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful day.